Hi guys, welcome to this demo of the Suta LA25 head. Uh, my first video in a couple of years, as you have noticed, I've uh, been on a quite a lengthy hiatus, uh, moving to a new city, new job, had a couple of kids on the on, along the way. But now I'm back in a new studio uh, facility here in the countryside, so uh, content will be coming. Um, anyways, with that out of the way, I'm using uh, my Fibonacci Roadmaster here since it has a HSS setup, so we'll cover more total ground and uh, the humbucker guitars in the in the intro. And um, we're gonna go through the overview of the amp and then the, through the different channels and you know various things like IRs. I'm right now I'm going into my two notes torpedo live and then adding own hammer IRs there. But we're also going to be listening to the built-in cab sim out and also be listening to it mic with the Sennheiser through this Hesu cab with the Cream X75. So just to compare tones a bit. In the track in the beginning you heard like a fully produced track, so a little bit of EQ post and, and stuff like that. Uh, this time around, you now for just the playthrough, it's completely non-edited, it's just a slight reverb added. And logic and uh, you know no EQ no nothing other than the IR itself which is two IRs it's a it's a Greenback 412 and a Weave 3412 blended you know slightly panned so that's what you're hearing basically so anyways let's check out the amp then shall we uh, what we have here is a free channel amp we have channel one two and three as you see here uh, lit up now it's channel one and then channel one has bass and treble here uh, you might find a middle lacking but this is more like voicing the amp around the middle like cutting and adding treble will you know add or remove the perception of the middle mid-range in the amp as well and then we have the volume for that channel here channel one also as you see here has a bright switch as well then on channel two and three you have a shared eq that's the one over here the presence is global for the whole amp and then you, on those channels you also have a vintage mode uh, that mode is sort of a you know plexi kind of mode and then kicking it out you have then channel two and three more of a high gain kind of la kind of sound uh, you have a boost uh, like a pre-gain boost that is active on channels two and three uh, adds a lot of extra girth and punch and then you have a dynamic switch which is, is sort of mimics uh, power amp saturation more it lowers the the volume a little bit of amps so you have to compensate for that but it's a real nifty feature when playing you know not super loud venues to have that you know hang and you know compression uh, from the power stage at low volume so i use that a lot uh, as well so and then we'll check out the you know the back side as well but what you have there is you have a bite switch that adds a little more girth and compression and high-end bite to the amp, sort of a you know, power amp uh, voicing switch, you might call it. And then you also have the effect loop. Effect loop has a lot of levels, so you can actually use that as a level boost if you like. What I usually do is I have a delay in loop, but also like a, a boost pedal or, or a level pedal if I want to add some mids or just if not just raise the level of the loop so I can use that as a lead level boost regardless of channel if I want so pretty nifty feature there as well and of course the cab sim and um, we'll look into that later so I'm not gonna mention more about that right now but with that said let's listen to some tones shall we so first out the clean channel where everything is straight up apart from the volume and gain. Uh, so here's this, just a basic clean tone. And if we add the bright switch, maybe add a little bass and treble here.
bright switch on that. Of course, this channel can be slightly saturated if you want to. Uh, so if we crank the gain the channel back off on the volume a little bit. So on the single call there's just a slight breakup if we go to the humbuckering. I usually run it around, say here. Maybe like so. Alright, so now we're on the second channel of the amp in like the lower gain kind of plexi style mode and this is what we got with all the controls straight up. Yeah. And then if we kick in that, kick out rather I should say that vintage mode, as you can see the gain is pretty cranked now, so if we back the gain off a bit and we kick out into the regular mode. <laughs> Kind of takes off where up here maybe where the gain is, so then you have all that extra range gain range. So that's the second gain stage, and then you have a boost on that as well. cleans up reasonably well even with the boost and everything engaged so Check out channel 3 then, uh, gain set at the same level we had on channel 2 where we left off. <laughs> Sort of picks up where channel 2 left off in terms of gain range and the EQ is the same so not a huge voicing difference there. But you know, links in with the other channel. So let's check out with the boost. <laughs> So 
plenty of gain, but still, you know, tight and defined and separated. <laughs> Cleans up reasonably well for that amount of gain and pre-boost as well. Pretty dynamic. Uh, and speaking of dynamics, let's check out then what the dynamic circuit actually does. So here's without the dynamic, full on boost everything. So what you heard there lowers the volume significantly or you know if i was playing louder live it then it wouldn't be that noticeable uh, as it is here in studio but it also adds saturation so you know you get a lot of saturation <laughs> One interesting thing about this dynamic switch, it's mostly active when the gain is on full on the guitar as well. So here you can hear a lot of it. But let's say I have the boost active now and everything. Let's say I go into you know, the middle in between the position here and just... Now if I activate it, back off on the volume it, no the difference is almost negligible so it's also still cleans up nicely still dynamic so even using that compression circuit to get more saturation and more you know hang and and compression live especially you can still clean the amp up if needed and play with dynamics with the guitars volume control and such even with max almost max gain on the amp itself so that's really impressive in, in my book so anyways, that's the front of the amp with the EQs and the channels, uh, all that stuff works. So we're going to switch the over, over to the back side and check out what's happening with the cab sim. Uh, and then, you know, go back on the front and check out the mic sound. All right, so we're back with the back of the amp, pun intended. And here you can see the, uh, you know, virtual mic uh, circuitry. What you have here, instead of a fixed filter with switches and stuff, you have a you know continuous uh, setup. So you have position of the mic that would be you know going from the cap edge to the dust cap, you know going like this, and then you have the axis that's you know the angle of the mic in re relation to the front of the speaker, simulating that, and you have a voice switch with sort of slightly more scooped sound, like slightly more mid rangey sound so right now i have it in the scooped setting uh, position a bit closer to the center of the speaker and axis not that much maybe 40 degrees or something i'm not sure uh, to slightly simulate that sound we had with the v30 maybe uh, or slightly more metalish kind of sound so here's what that sounds like <laughs> Of course, this is going to sound very different from what it would like being sent out to a front of house. I've used this, you know, live on numerous occasions and I actually prefer this for the PA and the monitoring system than a closed mic SM57 live. 
in a studio I, I prefer the IRs uh, they sound you know more like a studio mic uh, this is has a more compressed feel but you know uh, it's also about what usage you have for say guys like Bonamassa for instance uses the polymer stuff and usually he doesn't necessarily send it to front of house but he uses that cab sim tone in the monitor speakers instead to have a easier less abrasive kind of tone than a closed mic you know on his amps which sounds great through the front of house but might be a bit stringent and you know nasty in your face through you know floor monitors or in-ear monitors uh, so in that regard i also prefer this to the mic the closed mic sound but out through the pa depends on the venue of course you can mix them as well so you can use both the mic on the cabin and, and this as well but it's quite tonally flexible as with all these kind of cab sims that are slightly more compressed than an IR but uh, let's go through the you know the sweep of the knob so to say so let's begin here that would be like dead center cone this would be in between and this would be like the, the cap edge, sort of. And the axis then, this would be on axis. And this is sort of an in-between. Like totally off axis. So this, especially the axis, has a lot of tonal sweep to it. This might might be my preferred like setting. So let's put everything back to noon, and now we're in the mid range voicing. is slightly low, higher so I turn the volume down a little bit of the amp of course since this has more mid-range you can then alter the position a little bit of these to our taste so I mean it's it's a good feature to have and a good complement to you know micing a cab live or in the studio even you know fill in a little bit of that you know sound space you're trying to create. I found mostly using it live is is a really good feature. You know sometimes there might be a lot of leakage on state volume wise, so this might isolate the guitar signal and you know be easier for the front of house to mix into the, the whole thing. And of course you see here is the bite control I was talking about earlier. Uh, so that, you know, with this uh, include. Basically, what that does is shelf off that, like the super low end, and you know, compresses the sound a little bit more for a tighter feel, uh, which can be good in like running it for a big 412 or maybe a really boomy cab. You can, you know, control the, the low end a little bit more than you perhaps could with the, the front controls of the bass. Uh, so, it's a good feature to have as well. An effect loop over here, as I said before, uh, the you know, cab outputs. You also have a line out. And since this amp has a reactive load built in, you don't need to use it with a cab. So you can just use the head as is going up through this or going up through the line out and then into cabinet impulse response, for instance, uh, with the load. Now I'm going out here to the torpedo, uh, but I could, where I have the IRs loaded, 
but I could just as easily have gone up through the line out, straight into my sound card in my door, and then add an IR there as well. So that would sort of work the same way since this has a great reactive load built into it. So just, you know, have that in mind as well. So it's a versatile studio home amp as well where you can't really mic and stuff. You, you're not, you know, you're not sort of stuck with the, the passive cab sim here. You can actually use the line out and use whatever IRs or other type of cab simulation you want and get the whole amp sound through the line out instead. Or slave it out to a bigger amp or a you know power amp or whatever you want live as well. So good feature to have that as well. So let's go back to the front of the amp and let's check what it sounds like with a Sennheiser mic on this here. He's a, he's a 112 with a uh, Creamback 75. Right, we're back on the front. Uh, now with Sennheiser on the Creamback 75 and the Hesu 112. You can see I adjusted the EQ, you know, to my preference uh, to suit this cab in this room, in this, you know, in this environment, sort of. And this is what we have now. <laughs> So that was the overview of the Suta LA25 and you know various setups, produce track, IRs, mic cab, cab sim, functionality and so on. So great sounding little lamp, um, very handy size, convenient package, easy to log around and sounds great. And now that the 25 watts tutorial, this thing is loud, you know, seriously loud, uh, I've gigged you know, rock gigs with this, you know, you know, without even micing the cab on stage, it's it's that loud, like for, you know, medium, small clubs, at least you don't need to mic this out at all. So going through a 412 or 112 or whatnot, it's, it's plenty loud with 24 watts. So. so until next time, take care, see you around.